In my last clip, I spoke about the importance of sharing our stories, and here's another one. On this day, 20 years ago, something amazing happened to me. It was on this day, 20 years ago, that my first cochlear implant was switched on, and for that reason, I'll be celebrating this weekend. So my parents and I were back at the hospital, and we were called into my audiologist's fitting room I remember it like yesterday, we all went into the room, we sat down and I didn't have any hearing left at that time and I was lip reading the audiologist and I understood that the purpose of the visit was to set up my sound processor. So over the next hour or so, she connected my processor to the computer and using some software, I told her when some sounds were comfortably loud and then I told her when I could barely hear some sounds. It was like a good old fashioned hearing test. But what was really interesting was that I wasn't hearing the sounds through my ear. It was almost like the beeps were beeping inside me. It was very, very strange. My audiologist then said that she had all the information she needed and that it was time. Um, anyone who's been through this knows what I'm talking about when I say this, but it was almost like there was all this tension in the room. So my biggest questions were, is this going to work? What is it going to sound like? Will I be able to hear something straight away? Or will it take months for me to benefit? We knew that the implant was working because I could hear those beeps, but beeps in isolation don't really make for a good conversation. I just remember it, I just remember it like yesterday, the tension. There was so much tension in the room and I was so desperate for it to work. What happened next was my audiologist was tapping some buttons on her keyboard and then she looked at me as if she was waiting for me to respond or to say something. But what happened next was there was this very soft kind of whooshing noise, like a hum. And then suddenly I heard this white noise, like a sound. And it was only when I looked at my mother and I saw her lips moving that she was the white noise I looked and then I, and then I heard something else and I looked over and my dad's lips were moving. And then I realized that I could tell the difference between the two white noises, which were actually their voices. But then I looked back at my mum and my mum said something. She said, welcome back. I was so overwhelmed at being able to hear so many things in the first 15 minutes um, and I was looking at my parents at the time when I heard another noise and it was my audiologist jangling some keys and and then when I looked back at my parents again I responded to another noise so my audiologist had got up and switched on the tap um, above the sink in the fitting room. My audiologist said towards the end of the appointment that all of her expectations had been surpassed. And I was thinking to myself, your expectations? What about mine? It was just so amazing, uh, the experience. It was, I never thought I would expect to identify sounds, but also to know where they were coming from. When I think back um, at when my audiologist had turned the tap on, I remember making the joke that if that's what running water sounds like, then what does it sound like when you pee? <laughs> so we, we had a laugh about that. Okay, so let's just take a step back. What just happened? So basically I was given a sound processor I was connected to a computer. Using special software, 
I had to define the noises I could tolerate because of their loudness. And then I had to do the same for the noises I could barely hear. The software brings all that information together to create a program. And that determines what I can hear or the range of sounds that I can now hear. What happens every day is the microphone picks up environmental sounds, including my own voice. That goes to the sound processor. And the sound processor then digitizes that and sends the information to the implant. The implant will then send that information along the electrode that was um, implanted during my surgery. And it will do this up to 83,000 times per second. At the end of the electrode itself, there are 16 contact points and they are being stimulated up to 83,000 times per second. Now, I know this is very technical and it's OK if you don't understand all this right now, but it's amazing. My implant has been functioning for 20 years now. How many electronic devices do you have in your home now? that have lasted that long. And isn't it amazing that something that's barely visible to the human eye can actually deliver so much power? I would like to end this clip today by thanking my audiologist, Leah. You've been my audiologist for more than 20 years. And I wanna take this opportunity, not just for myself, but on behalf of the many people your team have cared for. Thank you to yourself and everyone at the Royal National Throat, Nose and Ear Hospital in London. Okay, until next time, bye.